So today we're at Boston Symphony Hall and we're gonna be recording a string quartet using ambisonic techniques. In order to do so, we're gonna run through the steps of what's necessary to set up and calibrate your system. An ambisonic microphone, such as this Sennheiser Ambio, is putting out four channels known as first order ambisonics. Depending on the brand of microphone, they vary what is coming out of each channel, or in other words, how it's interacting with the four capsules that the microphone has. In this case, we have channel one putting out left, front, up. Channel two is putting out left, right, down. Channel three is putting out back, left, up. And channel four is putting out back, right, down. One very important aspect of recording ambisonic information is making sure that all four channels coming out of your microphone are going into a system that can be properly calibrated. Ideally, you're gonna want that calibration to be within a tenth of a dB. The easiest way of recording ambisonics is using something like this Tascam four channel field recorder that I have, which allows me to digitally control each channel on the recorder and more so link all the channels on the recorder so that with the turn of one gain stage, I can actually turn all four channel preamps up or down as needed. Next, I'm gonna make sure that I have some way to play back signal tones. In case you don't have access to something like this or one of the many other forms of signal generators out there, you can also opt to use a signal generator app on your iPhone. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is calibrate the input to my recorder. So I'm gonna play pink noise out of my signal generator and plug it into the first channel of my field recorder. As I calibrate my signal, I'm gonna to want to make sure that I allow plenty of headroom so that once this is actually the microphone inputting into the recorder, it allows the performers to have plenty of headroom to interact with the hall. Because they're all linked, that's gonna be calibrated through the rest of the channels. So here I'm taking my signal generator, connecting it to input one, running test tone, and I'm gonna make sure that this hits roughly negative 12 dB. Once the four channels of my recorder are calibrated, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in carefully in order channels one through four to channels one through four on the recorder. After you do that, you're probably going to notice that the levels on each of the channels are no longer going to be absolutely identical. And that's to make up for the fact that the four tracks on the microphone are actually in 360 degrees listening to the environment that we're currently in. Therefore, you're going to have some that are getting on axis information and some that are getting fully reflective information. We found that first order ambisonics don't give us quite enough detail of the information that we're actually capturing in a setting like music recording. In order to make up for this, we will set up spot microphones on every single instrument that we intend to record in order to give us really close and accurate detail so that when the viewer turns his or her head, there is still enough detail of the sound sources in the room. Because of that, we're going to want to have some form of reference to time delay the spots to our ambisonic ambience recording later in post-production. Once I'm sure that my microphones are placed correctly in the spots that I want, I'm going to give myself a click that will allow me to then have an accurate delay reference later on. In a situation capturing a musical performance, we're going to want to be mindful of things like proximity effect, on axis, or direct sound and off axis or reflective sound. That will obviously be largely affected by the space that you're recording in. In a hall like Boston Symphony Hall, which has a huge reverberant character, we want to make sure that our primary microphone is close enough to the ensemble so that the direct sound arriving at the front of the microphone or both of the capsules in the front is greater than the reflective sound coming from the back. I'm going to want to position my microphone from a vantage point as though I were a conductor sitting in front of them. 
Finally, let's discuss how to monitor an A format ambisonic while you're recording. Some field recorders like the Zoom FM8 or the Sound Devices Mix Pre series will give you the option to monitor A format to B format conversion in real time, both in Ambix or Fuma formats. Today, because we're actually recording 16 channels of ambisonics in the four mics that we have, we're actually recording to a DAW where we can either use a plugin to monitor through and do the conversion from A format to B format, or a pseudo left and right using two channels out of any of our ambisonic microphones. So in summary, in order to capture an ambisonic recording, we need to calibrate our gain stages at our mic pre's, measure the delay time between our spot microphones and ambisonic sound sources, be mindful of the mic placement and the acoustic space that we're recording in, and finally monitor the recording accurately.